Good afternoon, everyone. It is 4.30 and time to uh, open this uh, meeting of the Moore Public Service uh, Commission. I will call the meeting to order and ask for a motion to approve our agenda. From anyone, got a motion? Second. Second? Second. That guy right there. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion is approved. I would also entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. No one told me they wanted to change anything. I move to approve the consent agenda. Got a motion. Second. Got a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion is approved. Customers to be heard or recognitions? I don't see customers. Bill, any recognitions? Nope. I don't have any. I recognize Bill. Yeah, thank you. He looks the same. <laughs> He's got a good tan. He's been away. Yeah. Uh, old business. I understand we do have at least one item of old business. John? No, I have more than one. Oh, okay. Well, I, I said at least one. Uh, yeah. So I had a chance to visit with uh, Bill a little bit about this. Um, as far as there is a bill, and I'm not sure if you're going to have somebody up to speak of it. There was a a butler cat bill for a $48,000 for a repair of generator. And that's when we were just visiting uh, with him about that, he said maybe we should go back to s some of the old days that we had as far as when we have a unusual item to put more of a uh, explanation of it. And I think he's going to have somebody speak to that more specific as far as what it's a generator at the, at the plant here mm -hmm. by the youth rink here for it. So again, that's kind of like the, the had been done in the past. I think it's a, just a good practice to get back into. Yeah, so what, that. what Commissioner Regal is talking about when we had uh, when Dave Curson was one of our commissioners, we kind of had this Curson rule where we did our uh, list of bills and we looked at it. You know, if Dave was looking for items that he'd want a little further explanation on, you know, we just did a one line sentence in there that <laughs> described in a little more detail right on the list of bills. So we're going to, you know, do that again. We have been doing it to a certain extent, but probably haven't been doing it as diligently as John would like us to. So we're going to, you know, have the Regala rule now and we're going to we're going to just put a little bit more description on some of those bills that kind of stick out. Um, just like John would, you know, we're going to try and anticipate what John would want a little more explanation on. And then when there's a item that's maybe even a little bit more advanced than that we'll just do a paragraph in the general manager's report now this one and taylor will go into just a little bit of detail on that forty-eight thousand because it is an interesting one and it's significant so if you want to have yeah taylor just a, uh, yep. if i may just a quick question um we if, if we're going to have that kind of explanation in the general manager general manager's report that comes after the consent agenda and after the financials will we have already approved financials where we're getting this kind of a verbal explanation after the fact is that is it, it generally i mean if we if it's when significant we that, enough we keep well if it's significant enough we'll have it in the same general manager's report as the list of bills okay um you know if if you if you okay. yeah and it'll be written general manager's report. Okay. So if you do have a question on it, you take the just list of bills off consent okay. and then just talk or about it. Or if we it. have that kind of explanation coming, should we just not have it on the consent? It, it won't. In the details, I think is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. It'll be written in the details. You might not have a question because the explanation will be there. Yep. Okay. Yep. I just want to make sure that we're not approving something that, that actually has an explanation that may generate some conversation or concern. I think generally if there's a description in there you probably won't have any questions yep. you know but you can always take it off the list the off the consent agenda and ask because of a change order we might have some concerns <laughs> right right so, you know i mean so yeah. so anyway and on this one we just thought we would give a brief description of what it is well i like the idea i'm just I, I'm, I'm being a bit of a technocrat on this yep, you know, yep. So, okay yep great taylor holt electric distribution engineer so the reason for this expense um, was at the Centennial Generation Station. We, during our monthly checks down there, <coughs> our electricians noticed that a radiator was leaking. Um, so the charges here are to have Butler come out and inspect it. 
um, to try to find the cause, and they had to perform significant significant amount of labor to disassemble the radiator and then haul it back to their shop to go through a vigorous cleaning process um, and then also come back and reassemble it. Um, what they think happened is the, the fluid inside, or the coolant fluid, fluid composition kind of degraded some of um, what Matt told me was the solder that kept held the pieces together and it eventually caused a leak. They also think a little bit of it had to do with some induced current that can cause some chemical reactions within the coolant as well. Um, sure. But it's still an ongoing investigation. Um, going forward, we are now trying to use distilled water rather than tap water to try to reduce the amount of uh, variability in that cooling solution, as well as continue to check um, for leaks, especially in the areas that are known now. And we're also trying to put some money for, or, uh, in the budget forward um, to prepare for any other leaks that may come up. A couple questions. Yep. So that was just one. That was just one unit there, and I believe what is it, three or four generators that we have? Five. So are the other ones going to be checked as well? And if not, should they, should be on a regular maintenance schedule to. I don't know, flush them or whatever the appropriate maintenance would be. Yeah, going forward, Good we're going. Uh, they already um, started using the distilled water, which they think could help prolong the life of the generators. Okay. Um, going forward, we're s we're still going to continue the monthly checks on upon them, uh, specifically to search for these leaks. Um, okay. Outside of that, without having a for sure. Uh, report on the investigation. It's it's okay. difficult to add a whole lot. Okay. Thank you, Dave. So is this a this is not a warranty issue, right? Um, they they are rather aren't they rather new? I mean, rather in quotation marks. They're about eight years old, but the warranty was for five years, so they are past that warranty. Cool. Surprised it didn't happen in, in year six or five and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Generally, there's a little ticker in there that just it makes it go off. So my, my second question then is, and I, I don't remember the details, so are we paying for the maintenance of the station? Because we got funding from MRES, wasn't it, for the for building it, but maintenance is ours? We get a lease payment from them annually. And in addition to that, and we're, I don't know if anybody had a chance to check on that, because we were, because I'm thinking that there's a, there's a portion of that's for maintenance mm -hmm. as well. So um, not that we're reimbursed directly for the maintenance, but there is a maintenance allocation in the lease payments anything else Cheryl Chris John uh, it was more of an observation here I was looking here at our website and uh, <coughs> the last time we had a video available to look at was April 3rd Thanks. I'm not sure how often they <coughs> should be coming up or whatever but then I looked at the cities here and it's and the EDA is more often, so it's just something we should look at and uh, see what we yeah. can. You want to step up to the microphone? No. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the man here. So yeah, no, we upload yeah. those two days after the meeting. They're, they've, we've been having email issues. So all our emails are bouncing from MPS. Mm -hmm. Casey has not even gotten in touch with Tim, who's my assistant at MCAM. Mm -hmm. So all those have been uploaded. They're on our web page. Oh, okay. They're on our YouTube page. We're going to create a YouTube page for you oh. that you'll have full control over, but we'll up, upload those videos on both pages at the same time, so you'll have them instantly. But they have been there. Mm -hmm. We've just been putting them on their page, and they're supposed to be linked over. Okay. But it's showing it's unavailable for the individual, for the citizenship. I have no idea why, because they're on YouTube. So. <laughs> that's my job. That's case, yeah. Um, I'm working on the other microphone, but right. that's because I'm not getting the emails from Tim. So I don't know when they're there, <coughs> and so I'd have to manually go out and search them all the time to, make, to find them, because then we have to insert the link. So 29 talks about it doing the YouTube channel, so that we can just have one main link on our website that will go directly to more public services on the YouTube channel, because otherwise it's required to do a search through MPAS, right. who has a lot more than just MPS meetings, right. and even myself to find those links without getting them directly to sure. Tim from his emails is yeah. very difficult. So I think okay. I have up to May on there, and I 
I looked again today and I still I struggled to get anything down there too. Yeah. Because mm. There's so many videos on there from there. Heidi. Is this the same issue that some of the city council members have with trying to email MTS and everything going to that? I believe so. And uh, we just changed this week to Outlook, so we've got a different email server. Whether that's going to, you know, change that, I'm not sure, but we'll continue to work on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe wait a week. I tried. To, <laughs> I tried to send me an email today. And, it didn't work, and it, and it never arrived. Well, you've got we've got to set up your emails a bit differently because we changed to Outlook. Yeah, so I, I I couldn't get something I was trying to move over to that. Yeah, I, I, can't, I, I can't email anybody at MTS. Yeah, I have to. Well, we fixed that though. We we didn't want you to be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, we'll work. <laughs> We've had enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot to tell you about that part. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, we're in the tra we're in the we're transitioning to Outlook, which we've had bad you know not the greatest email server it's kind of been going downhill and that's why we're changing to outlook so hopefully that's going to help things but i know all the commissioners on their ipads are going to have to change you know something in their settings in order to get the emails mm. and we'll we'll get you some information on that and that just occurred i mean that's just last friday wasn't there sunday over the weekend okay so i mean fine. it just happened okay. thank you uh, Next item here is last month, I think Cheryl had talked about, we received a letter from an individual. I think in the packet, we had a copy of the response that Nancy sent to him, but actually we did not get the actual the letter, and that was supposed to be sent out to us as well. So Should have gotten that before, but I can send that out again. Well, unless it's lost in the email. Okay. So, hmm. so that would be. Okay, you know, I'll, I'll send that out. It never arrived. That happen, I think. Yeah. And then the, the final item here, as far as to support for your thoughts, your here, um, I have um, been thinking about our scholarship program that we've had, and from every place that I'm hearing is that there's a growing demand for the trades that we are running out of trades. We do have a scholarship for our linemen here. Uh, but I'm wondering if we shouldn't think about either increasing or somehow working with our program that we have to <coughs> have a little bit more focus in the trade area. Um, in, in the number of industries, plumbers, and electricians, there's a shortage. And if we don't make some kind of <coughs> vested interest, I know with the, working with the home builders, they're trying to become more involved and get people involved in the trades. And it's, it's difficult because the focus is on college and everybody should four-year school you know that may or may not be correct right but we definitely have a shortage in the trade areas so I'm thinking here we should have some discussion as far as either increasing it or modifying it or whatever uh, for some something like that in the future I don't know about the rest of you but I, I would love to really kind of look at what we do with our our essay and scholarship program and such and, and really take a look at at, at, at whether we're uh, accomplishing, you know, a, a particular goal or whether we're doing it because we've always done it. Um, I do like the approach that, that we could be a little bit more uh, direct to, to what it is that supports what we do as an industry as well as um, uh, probably uh, just uh, the, the appropriate use of of the resources, you know, if it if it is directly supporting what it is that we're doing as a as a, an employer and a utility, um, uh, is that something uh, appropriate to our strategic planning, or can we just do it without getting into the bureaucracy of that? Or I think the uh, the budget committee can mm -hmm. talk about it. Mm -hmm. uh, we can put it on the agenda for the budget committee if they allocate a little and it's not going to be a lot of money, but a little bit more, you know, to expand the trades. I think. I think that's a great idea. I heard an NPR report on it just, I think, yesterday, uh, talking about how home building is, you know, really slow right now because of workers, yeah. worker shortage. Um, but I think if we just start with the budget committee and then next year, you know, we can either with staff we can take a look at it um, or have a couple of commissioners right. help us and we can kind of figure out what we want to do. So. 
So start with the budget committee. Is everybody good with that? And then mm -hmm. move from there. Uh, but also, I'd, I'd like to look at, at the, the spring essay program, too. I know that we have some affiliation with the, with the providers on that one, too. But uh, Right. Well, and, the, and, and Casey will remind me of this if I don't say it. Uh, we do work with uh, the Minnesota Municipal Utilities Association. Yeah. So, uh, you know, our scholarship winners go on to compete at the state level. Mm -hmm. So we do have to kind of stay lockstep with their program. Yeah. And that's what the essay is about. Yeah. If we do the trades, I mean, I, I believe we could probably do something on a one page, shorter, one paragraph, like I've seen my kids fill out, mm -hmm. which doesn't have to be <clears throat> part of that other essay, which the trades can apply for that one as well, but have something specifically for the trades. Right. And Missouri River Energy Services, as I mentioned, you see they also have a scholarship program for which they use a consultant so they can go through a nice process. And I think that might be focused on trades, but I can't say for sure. Yeah. I have to look into it more. And yeah. so we could also concentrate on more on that one if you wanted to mm, as well. That's fine. Yeah. And of course, we have a tech school right here. Mm -hmm. but we do. Yeah. Community All college. World. <laughs> Speak there. So thank you. Yeah. In fact, you know, th there are probably opportunities for us to do more with our community college than we do. So yeah, I I sure I'd welcome that conversation. Uh, it seems everyone's getting into the business of two-year degrees and two-year certifications and new uh, new academies that are popping up and so forth. And it it seems that that, that we ought to be involved in that conversation. I know a lot of employers in the community are as investors in some of these schools and stuff that are popping up, you know, us included, but um, but I like the I, I like the idea of doing something more to 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 push the uh, the trades that, that we specifically hire. So I think that's a great idea. Cool. Budget committee you got your work cut out for you. <coughs> so anything else? Okay, that's all I got. That's it. Anybody else? Yeah. Ralph. Uh, quick, quick question on the uh, geothermal uh, grant, whatever we have there. Uh, any progress on allocating that to somebody, or are we still looking? Uh, we're still looking. We uh, and Dennis can add, uh, but I'll be brief. Um, we we're working with Concordia College to do a single residential home, and uh, provided a rebate for that. So that's a real small part of the project. Uh, what we're also looking at and working with Bush Agricultural Resources for, you know, two or three part possibility for geothermal. And they're very interested in the project because they have to be 100% um, sustainable by 2025. Mm -hmm. So they're very interested and it could be up to 280 wells on their site. They're very interested. Um, we've got to crunch a lot of numbers and take a look at a lot of things. Dennis is working on that with Bush and um, and then we'll get back to you. That's And we're working with Missouri River Energy Services on that as well because they're really the ones that provide the rebates that we would like through their Bright Energy Solutions program. So we're kind of moving them along with us. So, so that's a brief update. We can give you more later. Thanks. Yep. yep. Great. Anybody else? We're going to back up to item number five just for a moment. A customer has arrived for, for a portion of the meeting. And uh, if, if you would, just come up to uh, the seat and the microphone. Tell us who you are and, uh, and what's up. I certainly will. Uh, thanks yeah. for having me. My name is Toby Mulvihill. I'm at 1722 11th Street South here in Moorhead. Uh, I also own a business. <coughs> It's a massage therapy and uh, reflexology business in South Moorhead. We just relocated from downtown uh, called Body Sava, and that's on 30th Avenue South. And to be totally honest with you all, uh, the only reason that I've come here today is to kind of make light out of the kind of archaic practices that are happening through online bill pay. And uh, I'm sure this is a, <laughs> I, see it, I see it on smiles on everybody here. So I'm sure it's something that's not new at all. Um, and I'd just like to touch on that with every uh, standardized service that I'm, I'm well aware of and that I'm participating in as a consumer, whether it's this community or at the, at the greater, uh, we have a fee that's associated with our online opportunity to pay our MPS bill. And uh, to be totally real, I would way rather not 
enjoy that that service fee simply because I think it's an outdated and unnecessary contract, and I'm, I'm not sure if that has to do with cost of service that we incur as a community uh, to utilize that or not. But I, as for the rest of my abilities to just automatically draft out so that it really reduces the amount of time and effort that I have to put into it as a consumer, I tell you what, if I could go ahead and utilize an automatic draft pay without having to pay the extra fee, I would definitely put that to use. But as of right now, I'm giving my dollars, in reality, my cents, to the post office instead, because that way I can just drop it in the mail and be assured. Now, I understand that that's supporting our, our federal and somewhat our local branch as well, but I'd really like to just kind of put a petition in there and say, hey, I would, I would really like to see that revised, because I would love to just give you my money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd like to take That's it. it. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I don't know if this has been an issue before, if there is any, any you know, I see I see a yeah. couple of nods that yeah. yes, yeah. Yeah. we have definitely been there. But um, yeah. yeah, other than that, I, I think the the overall message that I was getting when I was first coming into, you know, setting up the uh, the automatic payments uh, is the, the general lack of kind of customer, uh, customer to, uh, to business, I guess, uh, relationship that is going on within the community. and. I've, I've seen three businesses in my life, in my entire life, that have a one-star review on Google, and unfortunately, MPS is one of them. Mm. So I'd love to see that switched around because I know that you guys do plenty, and you're obviously taking time to, to listen to what I'm saying, so I super appreciate that, but I would love to make that rating raise up a little bit and hopefully have a little bit better uh, public relation between community and, and yeah. you guys. So. Thank you very much. Well, I appreciate your comments. Uh, Bill and I have conversations almost constantly about consumer uh, customer service and, and uh, some of these conveniences. Uh, there's another one that's my pet peeve I'll share with you. Sure. My billing day moves every month. <laughs> it's never yeah. the same day. And that drives me crazy. Yeah. And you know, I, I know that you know, we can do some of these things better. And you know, yours is a good example. I think mine's a good example. So. Uh, I appreciate you stepping up to, to make us aware, and I had no idea about a single star. So we, yeah. we need to. I think we're sitting just over one star rating. We, we, we need to, we, yeah, <laughs> maybe we just moved up a little notch. But, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but I so think if we make this change, then you'll go in there and star us a little I'll higher. gladly give you a five star. <laughs> Sounds good. No problem. Sounds yeah. good. I don't know how much impact it's going to have, but yeah. I, will, I will yeah. gladly do that, yeah. I, it's a bigger issue than, than you know, any of these single ones, but uh, it also is uh, an, an item that, that is an underlined, redlined sort of an item in the, the new current strategic plan that, that we put in front of Bill. It used to be an expression in a paragraph about customer service and how we were going to work toward excellence, and, and we've been pushing that up to its own, its own category. And, uh, um, your comments, at least as far as I'm concerned, are really helpful in, in making us press that with the staff. So I appreciate Thank you. that. No, I certainly appreciate you listening. And you I know that it's a, a very trivial complaint. In, it's in not trivial. No, it, it's, of, no. You know, it's one of the bricks. Email changes. It's one and, of the bricks yeah. in the wall. So yeah. Well, and, and yeah, thank you very much for the comment. Uh, and it isn't trivial because I think, you know, you're, there's a trend there that we're hearing that more often. Mm -hmm. um, you're talking to a you know, a governmental entity, a city entity, a utility that you mentioned cost of service. Um, we have to make a decision and, the, and this board will wrestle with that uh, where if we provide a service like this that costs us money, you know, free to you, which is what you would like, it does end up being uh, paid for by others that aren't taking advantage of that service. And, you know, so we'll get complaint or we could get complaints from others saying, why are you doing that? Because I'm not using that service. That's what we wrestle with. Um, sure. How, you know, however, the more we get comments like this, and, I, and that's where your comments make a big difference, you know, it does push us toward looking at that. But that's what we're going to have to look at. Because, uh, you know, what we're doing is making customers like you pay for that service because it costs us every time someone does that. It goes out of town, of course, to Visa and MasterCard and all of those. Sure. So we're not making anything on that. We would actually have to pay to allow you to do that. 
Right. right. So. And that's kind of what I assumed as well. So. Yeah. yeah. One thing I do want to mention, Toby, you had mentioned automatically crafting that payment. We do sure. have an automatic payment plan. Okay. So if you go to www.mpsutility.com, on the right hand side, there's a form right here. You can click on that and then you can um, actually then you read about it. And then <laughs> 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 yeah. and so, okay. so we have this automatic payment plan. I'm not in customer service, so I'm not familiar with it. Free. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. But if your date due date always changes, then yes. you never know when yeah, so they haven't fixed that yet, <laughs> but I do that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that, that's well, whatever. Good information. <laughs> but, but along those lines, too, I mean, we need to get our customers to pay online, right? So we should make that attractive, and we also need to get our customers not to have a bill in the mail anymore. Because mm -hmm. still, I tried to find a number, I couldn't find it, but we're yeah. still paying thousands of dollars every month to mail our bill, bills. Mm -hmm. right? I think those go hand in hand. If we can save on that end. We don't need to, I mean, we can arrange something there. Yeah. Because I think, I think we still have too many customers paying. The old fashioned way. Right. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It, it took deal. me a long time to be comfortable with receiving email mm -hmm. notifications or doing the e billing option. Mm -hmm. And now that I've, you know, finally been almost forced into it uh, yeah. by, by other companies, I'm finding that it is a lot easier to manage, especially if we are up on that, you know, that, that automatic schedule. Um, but this, this is really good information because when I call into, uh, you know, well, not City Hall, but MPS, I have never heard of this. And I will be totally honest, this is one of those one-star reviews. It turned into a three-star review <laughs> after they found out about this. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> moving on. There you go. Okay. Yeah, moving on. Right. Yeah, thank you. Right. But no, I, I, I sincerely appreciate that because that way I can... Jump right into that business. Good deal. Okay, so right. just go to mpsutility.com, and then on the right, on the right hand side, side of that home page, yep. Perfect. there's the link, and then you get to this, and then you get the link. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you very much. Guys. Okay. Toby, I appreciate you, appreciate you taking the time to come in and give us kind of just your real world experience. Yep. It's good to hear. Good. I'm glad. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Toby, right. thank you. Appreciate it. Right. Take care. Thanks. Oh, uh, yep. Nancy. Another note on that, too. We are in the middle of upgrading our That's about a third of our customers who are electronic. That means two thirds are not. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can incentivize another third to, you know, maybe it is a dollar off your bill, whatever it is, uh, to say go and move to electronic pay and electronic bill receipt. Right? So we don't have to mail stuff out anymore. Yeah. So. How many actually still walk through the door to pay, pay the bill? Nancy, do you have any? How many walk through the door and pay? Um, I don't have that number exactly. When we get to our um, annual management report, when we get to page 29, it shows that you know, we have about 52% of our customers pay either through the mail or up at our office. Or in person. So, I, and I would guess 95% <coughs> of those are that 50% well, do, do you have a drop box? Mail. Don't you have a drop box on the main floor? Right, yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, mail, drop box, or at our office. And so then we've got about... Um, 13% that do payments online themselves, that generate transactions themselves. 
and about 26% are on the auto pay, or that's where MPS pushes the transaction through the banking system and deducts that from their account automatically. So that's the no touch required by the customer approach there. So, and definitely our least cost approach there. Is there a split between MPS in person payments and city oriented payments? You know, if, if somebody's coming in on other fees or assessments or something? These are all payments that show up on the MPS bill. Okay. So we don't separate, I mean, I can separate dollars of MPS versus city, but it's yeah. one combined bill. Yeah. And so it's one bill, one payment that comes in. Okay. But are there other transactions then that we do on behalf of City Hall that? No. That aren't so measured in that? So That's all that happens at that window. With their you know, special assessments or property taxes or thing, that doesn't flow through MPS at all. Okay. So they're, they're handling those transactions themselves. Okay. Just a clarification, Nancy. Have we ever done an assessment of what it costs to produce a paper bill and to mail it? Uh, it's been a while. Okay. Because from, uh, from the experience that I've had as far as for for producing a bill and mailing it, the time and energy and hard costs, it's significant, mm -hmm. a lot more than I think people really appreciate. So uh, we may want to look at combining that effort with just doing some research of what it actually is from cost, because I've, I've heard it from anywhere from 20 to $50 a bill. Well, that's still an item of real conversation between us and, and, uh, and City Hall. And you know the the service that we provide them in collecting you know what we do for them you know it is expensive to, to crank out a bill and uh, so well, you know, there's not, more to talk about on that yeah to, <coughs> to, to, to put some numbers here I mean we are sending out seventeen thousand seven hundred forty bills a month every month yeah okay so if you put a dollar to it that's seventeen grand right? mm -hmm. every month so I think we need to look at this hand in hand with how easy it is to pay electronically and maybe make a requirement, more of a requirement to have people receive their bills in, uh, in electronic forms. I think with the new platform and the third party partner we've got, I think we will need to promote that as an option for those customers, definitely. We could talk about this all evening. Yeah. You know, maybe we shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we shouldn't. But, um, we'll, we'll work on it. But you know, I appreciate Toby coming in to just you know tell us his experience. I I would love to hear more of that more often. So so anybody out there that you know cares to join us occasionally, you know, feel free. Um, moving on then to reports. Heidi, let's start with City Council. I don't, have don't have anything tonight. Okay, it's quiet in City Hall. Okay, good deal. Great, thank you. Public Service Commission, commissioners, anything from? You individually. Chris? We have a water tower. We have a water tower. And it's painted beautifully. It was really painted white before all the other stuff yeah. happened. I, I, my office looks at it. And holy cow, was it white. Sunglasses. And, yeah, I mean, <laughs> gleaming white. You know, which it was beautiful. And then it started to look like. Wow. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. 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 I wonder what's back. All right, there we go. And look at those nice heads. Yeah, two of our employees. <laughs> The graphic is so much. I'm just glad they didn't get the back of my head. <laughs> the graphic is so much bolder and bigger than than I pictured it would be, and maybe that was just because of the way it was presented. But but it it stands out. It, it's really beautiful. Have you talked to Les about this? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gotten any reaction from Les at all. Okay. No, no. But then, I, I think. Share it to his timeline on Facebook. Yeah, you really probably should. Yeah. So. No, any other any other comments? Looks great. It really does. So, Chris, you happy with that contractor? I'm very <laughs> still happy. evaluating. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're we're filling actually filling the tank uh, with water as we speak, so we're at point now. But um, pretty happy with that contractor, and I think it was challenging for them. It's a unique um, artistic design for the tank, and uh, a lot of work went into it that they. I think they're, they're proud. the contractor is very proud of the work and they have it on their website. And so oh, good. Yeah. there's a lot of folks that are very really proud of the work that went in and I think it was a team effort. It was it was complicated. We spent a lot of time on how that would wrap around and, yeah. and specifying it in the right paint and getting everything right. And so I think um, great job by the design committee. Great job uh, all around. Appreciate
appreciate the community members that were part of the process and people that showed up to so fight for it. Yeah, we yeah. did have to fight for it. the opening as well. Yeah. So worth, think, worth the fight. Um, yeah, yeah it's it, was, nice. it was a good, good unveiling event. A lot of press was there, and so I think it was a, a really good and neat story for more. I would like to have been there. It moved a day, and I was not able to yeah. shift that way. But yeah, yeah well, they didn't play nice with us. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, no, it looks great. I, a, a question that, that occurred to me: I was over there on the site a couple of different times. Did we have, or did, did the contractor have twenty-four hour security presence there? They had, I, it it, yeah, it, it looked had, like their foreman was on site twenty-four hours. Yeah, that's what we it looked had like. Cameras and stuff up because they don't want the site to be vandalized or yeah. intruded upon. And, oh. Nobody, people were really respectful, appreciate that. That's good. Um, it's good out of the work area. It's a dangerous, it's not a great work environment to be in, so we don't want anybody in there, and people were very respectful. So it was one of the concerns for the project, just being at a park, so much foot traffic. But, sure. Um, but the community was very respectful of the site. Well, good. So you're ready to fill it and take the main water line down in 2021 Street? Yeah, so we'll fill it, and then yeah, starting in September, I think we'll be taking the main transmission line down uh, for the 2021st Street project. We're still working with the contractor on that, but uh, it's just we we we're very cognizant of that timeline, um, so it can't happen fast enough. We're excited to get the water back up there. Uh, it's a good portion of our storage. So. Okay, members, anything else from any of you? Mr. General Manager, you're up. The only item I have right now is the uh, number four on the general manager's report is uh, capture the sun community solar garden update and we are fully subscribed oh. with this year's uh, solar project so good news yep good news and we'll do the same thing plan on doing the same thing next year so people will get a letter and uh, they can buy a panel out there. So this is the first full week of August, so up and running? Uh, is it up and running? It's operational, yes. Okay, it is. so operational, Dennis That's says. That's what your report said, so. Okay, yeah. yep. I'm just holding you to it. Yeah, no, that's, <laughs> I, I didn't read the back side of the report, so. Um, and then we'll, like we've done in the past, we typically have done a open house um, ribbon cutting during public power week. Hmm. Um, so. And it usually, we'll, we'll figure out what the best day is. The other uh, item for Public Power Week is uh, Bush Agricultural Resources has invited us to have a meeting like we tried to do with another one of our customers uh, last year. But they, uh, Bush would like to invite us to have a meeting out there in October. Ooh. So that October 2nd uh, meeting would be in their boardroom they're very comfortable with being open to the public, so they have no problem with that. And then they would do a tour uh, at that meeting as well. So I'm anticipating, you know, a shorter meeting and then have a, a tour. So cool. And then they can tell us about all the things that they're looking at. Because they're, Dennis, was it their 150th anniversary, I believe? There was some, it was some anniversary year this year that they're going to be doing a lot of celebrating. Yeah, so they'll tell us about that when we're when we're there. So that's all I have. The anniversary of beer. Yeah. Wonder how many years that is. I figured he'd know. <laughs> Six thousand years. The okay. Egyptians started. At least. Yeah. At least. Mm -hmm. Item number eight is uh, to accept the 2017 annual management report from our public service. You have a hard copy as well as. I think we have a digitized copy that was mailed to us, but yep. yeah. yeah, this is just our annual management report. It has a lot of statistics in it. Uh, you've got the non-public version. Uh, it has customer data in the back that you know you can't share. Um, we use it so that from year to year we've got a lot of statistics on things that are happening, like we just looked at. Um, if you have any questions, we can answer those. Um, we do also use it for strategic planning, and uh, you can take it, look at it. If you've got questions in the future when we do strategic planning, uh, it's a good source of information if you just want to kind of think about things. Do we put any of these in places like the public library and so on for public access? 
I don't. I just wonder if that's anything that they'd be interested in having. Yeah. I, I want to say we used to, but for some reason we don't anymore. At the library, or even on our website. No, not on our website. Yeah. Um, I want to say we used to send them to the library. It's kind of interesting stuff. Too, but I don't know if they did launch it anymore. Yeah. I don't know what the reason was. That yeah. They there's probably not a lot of circulation, but it's good public information. So. All right. Actually, I have a question, Bill. Okay. Um, I was at Herbert's last week <clears throat> and realized that that's the third big customer we're going to lose in 12 months, right? Between Family Fair, Sands, and Herbert's. So, how does it affect the electrical? I mean, going to have a big impact or? It well, it's a, it's a big impact because I believe it's 1% of our sales. So, you know, we were pretty flat in our growth anyway because of all the energy efficiency, LED lighting, that type of thing. So to lose 1% isn't helping us in our efforts to sell more kilowatt hours. Um, there are a couple of our large industrials, or yeah, a couple of them actually, because Bush is actually still trying to get an expansion, and then Pactiv is as well looking at expanding. You know, so those would be significant for us very significant but it is tough to lose those retail operations especially the refrigeration of sams so one percent is is a tough number to take mm -hmm. thanks for asking anything else just a question here okay. for you Bill. Um, okay. when i was looking through the photos here um, i know we have to be sensitive of, of it but it sure would have been nice for me to be able to place a name to the picture oh. but it could be a nightmare, Sorry. and we might have issues with putting names out um, in there or not. But I, I just thought it would, uh, for me, it would have been a nice way to identify the employees here. A little captioning. But I, yeah. Well, but then I was thinking of all the pictures and how do you do it and all that sort of thing would be a nightmare. But, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if there's a simple answer to that or not. But I just kind of thought we have a lot of nice pictures of our staff on there, and I, I looked at the faces and I'm kind of like. I don't think that's a bad idea, actually. Yeah, I mean, and that's... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but the people in this room... You know. And that's, you know, that's evolved. We just started that a couple of years ago because of pictures. Yeah, a picture's worth a thousand words, and there's so many pictures out there that, you know, we've asked our managers to get pictures together, and, and it, it does work out really well. I think that's the best part of the report myself. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the one picture I'm assuming must be from the guys who went and volunteered to Florida. Mm -hmm. Right, yep, yep. That would be just a great... Yep, and, and the Red Rock construction is in there, and, I mean, we could really yeah. probably go page by page through there and just, you know, just talk about those pictures, which... I think is fun, you know. Because you only gave one guy a name to the whole book. <laughs> what's his name? <laughs> oh, what's his name? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just just for a second, you know, just indulge me for about uh, two minutes. Open up to the first page, and I'll just give you a little bit of a highlight okay. photos or of the photos. Because okay. I mean, I do think it's a it's a good thing to. Uh, to talk about and I'll just really a high level you know you've got uh, you know the employee that was burned you know you got Matt Marks there right. but, you know when he came back to work that was a significant time the bottom picture is the Brookdale sub which those guys were cleaning the sub yeah. and uh, that's a significant one turn to the next page you've got top top left is the ones that volunteered to go to Florida um, and then that one is my birthday with all the customer service staff in the mid so that was in June. I believe that was my birthday, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, on the next page. So the top right is, I remember some of these. Yep. I remember some of them had stuff. Is Matt Marks giving a tour to a family of the Capture the Wind site. Mm. Sure. Oh, okay. And Jerry <laughs> Borman is in a couple of those pictures on that page. On the right side, we've got, uh, you know, just a customer that's pointing to their name on the plaque up at the Capture the Sun site. New uh, line truck on the top right. Dennis Eisenbrown, his uh, wife, and Marcy Douglas from Missouri River Energy Services at the grand opening last year. Me in glasses, because I spent a year without contacts, by the way. 
Next page, you got Joe on the top left, uh, and then just you know, a variety of pictures with linemen doing stuff. And uh, <laughs> and <laughs> so, 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 so the top box there was already put together when I pulled these together. It was already a collage of score photos, and I think that's part of the Oakport transfer. Yep. Too. Yep. Oakport was up there. So the those yeah those four on the top are all Oakport. Yeah. Um, you see, Bill, I think I think John's comment is really well taken here. Yeah. You're telling us a story yep. uh, that the, I, the the narrative is is really valuable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yep. you know, with a little bit more. Yeah, we could do that. You no, know, we we could do that on each of these pages to just kind of okay, tell, just tell your story. Okay, indulge me here. No. <laughs> so okay, power. Keep this is our significant uh, outage that happened when Wapa's transmission line went down. So that's a picture actually off the TV. Next page is fun because that's the that's the XL parade in in downtown Moorhead, downtown Fargo. The following page is Chris. Help me. That's the uh, pilot. The pilot skid. And the is, next is page. Is that still running or is it as far as moving? It's still running. It'll be running for another year. So, um, the following page is just uh, part of our family night for the culture. We have all the vehicles mm -hmm. lined up as an overhead view. And then okay. one of the bases is full. I picture one of the bases we clean out is really quite muddy. Um, and so that's our, our uh, large plant staff cleaning and spraying that that's out. That's sludge? That's sludge. It's actually, oh. it's actually just. Yeah. <laughs> Just say this, is just <laughs> this is just mud. <laughs> this is just mud. This is just mud. It looks like slush to me, though. Yeah. <laughs> you press it. It's not it white. It could be worse. <laughs> yeah. It's not powdery. <laughs> next <laughs> next page, Chris. Worse. But, 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 but to, to Chris, the good point is to everybody who's watching it, this is the stuff that's not in your office. Right. Oh, well, yes. okay. That's a great point. <laughs> that's a great point. That's the stuff we're taking out. That's the stuff we're taking out. <laughs> yeah. Great point. <laughs> Um, next couple of pages, uh, our softening basin uh, recoating process and cleaning process. One of our folks is down in the softening basin. Um, one of our staff on the right hand side is operating a large valve. And then scuba, we do inspections of our intake facility down at the river. So we have scuba divers come once a year. So uh, once every couple of years. So do we have any zebra muscles on that screen? I know it's a special uh, screen, but. Uh, we haven't seen them on the screen yet. We see them on the pumps. We see them on the platform. As, as part of 21st, when we shut down the river line, we're going to do a full inspection again. So we, we will we'll probably see them on the pumps and piping, but not so much on the screen. Mm -hmm. And then just a few photographs of the um, Old Port Water Tower uh, recognition process. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of talking. Um, and then just some, so the next pages are just a few photos of our uh, our water crew staff performing watering replacements. Uh, one of, bottom left is down by Rose Shore Drive on one of the uh, foot uh, levees there where we string out pipe to uh, pipers, uh, a, a good section of, of pipe. Um, yeah. And the next page is more kind of watering replacement photographs. And then uh, if you're caught up to this page, this is at one of our employees that lives up in Oakport that uh, we had a, it was kind of a family night with all the MPS employees out there. That was a lot of fun. Captain Public Powers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> he lives the, in Oakport. Yeah. He does. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Who knew? The, the next, <laughs> the next page uh, on the very top, kind of sad but happy. The, those three, I mean, uh, Dave Cayley on the very left-hand side, electric division manager, retired, um, and uh, Cliff McLean, water division manager, retired. And we were at a funeral of Tom Brown, um, our, one of our, was he electrician? Meter, meter man. Yeah, meter, or meter uh, serviceman. Mm -hmm. So... And then the, on the right side, there is the Red Rock Hydroelectric Power Facility of Missouri River Energy Services. Um, 
$300 million project you're, you're paying for. You'll be paying for part of that for the next 300 years or Where 700 it? years. It's down by Pella, Iowa. So it's, it's mm -hmm. yeah, it's right next to Pella. Which is east and south of Des Moines. Des Moines. On the Des Moines River. That'll be done next, next year. Um, more on the uh, family night on that next page on bucket truck rides. And then, of course, the next page is commissioner stuff. You know, um, Cheryl was on a tour. We had our employee recognition luncheon. We were in D.C. with Colin Peterson, and Ken Norman is on there after. That's from the news report after he retired from the commission. That's it. Probably could have a few more commissioner pictures, but we'll work on that for next year. Group picture. <laughs> Love the caption you keep. Retires after 17 years after term limit. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was from the forum, I'm sure. Now it's in history forever. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I, think, I think this is an excellent example of all the work yeah. things that the staff does. Yeah, you look at the different operations that they do yeah. to keep the utility working. It's yeah, and agree. Great staff. I mean, just you can see hard workers, you know, happy, smiling. I mean, a yeah. lot of activities going on. It's amazing all the things that go on in a year, you know. I would Thank entertain you. a motion to accept the 2017 annual management report. Mm -hmm. Got a motion? Second. Got a second? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion is approved. Item number nine is uh, to approve general service rule of 100 rate modification. This is the last step, right? This is the last step. Okay. Uh, this is a rate change. So we did have our rate hearing <coughs> and uh, had our 30 day period of customer comment. We've not received any comments and didn't really expect to see any comments. It's gen you know, it's, it's positive for all those low load factor customers out there such as a charging station and uh, just like we talked about with the billing when you you know if you approve this rate you know the customers that see a benefit from this rate change you know that that cost that we're not charging them is, ch is passed on to others um, on this one you could argue you know, and, and just because the, <coughs> the customer charge is an easy charge to identify doesn't mean you necessarily should charge that customer for it. This one is much harder to identify and define on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, such as the, the Kiwanis Club that does a pancake feed on a Saturday morning that uses an electric grill, <coughs> you know, once a quarter they end up paying a really big price for running an electric grill, griddle for a few minutes on a Saturday morning. And we know it's not on our peak, so the big demand charge that they pay isn't necessarily appropriate. And this rule of 100, we're calling it, comes identically from XL Energy, who is, we had a long conversation with them, with our rate consultant, Tim Miller, and uh, from MRES, and uh, everyone's comfortable that this is a good rate change. So we are recommending the rate change, um, and it will be uh, communicated to the uh, charging station people, and they will then move ahead with the charging station. Questions? It's been in front of us a few times. <clears throat> I think we probably understand it. Final call, questions? I'd entertain a motion to approve. I'd move to approve the general service rule of 100 rate modification. Thank you very much. Anyone care to second? Second. Got a motion and a second. Last chance for discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion is approved. I item number 11 is to review preliminary 2019 strategic planning and budget timetable appoint a budget committee and set date for water and electric rate hearings 
I'll just it's that time of very year. briefly yeah start there's not a lot of action that you know needs to be taken on this one however take a look at the memo <coughs> and if you have a chance to kind of read through it there's a lot of stuff in there Nancy does a great job of kind of yeah. giving a, a summary of everything that's been done and we do it this way pretty much every year so you've seen this before uh, but you will want to probably study that and the budget committee will take off from here um, our, the real um, action item here is just to appoint a couple of people to the budget committee. Do we need to make any changes there, folks, or are we settled with the committee as it current, currently stands? <coughs> no, pass. <laughs> oh, budget's fun. <laughs> budget's fun. I did it for years. Uh -huh. No, there's no art involved. <laughs> <laughs> There could be, you, you know. I mean, what the heck? Let's be let's be kind of free here. You know? yeah. Yeah. If we can get Bill to put captions on photographs in the report, yeah. you know, we could do something with. They the say there's art in rates, so there's a little art there. Yeah. Yeah. There's rates in art too, you know. Yeah. If you do it, yeah. Right? so yeah. yeah. Okay. And we do want you to approve the uh, the date for the uh, rate hearings, October sixteenth. Okay. So that's so, the other thing. So point two people and so our two members are the date. raise your hand so I can see who you are. You and <laughs> half of John. Half of John? Just just one side John of it? Is He's good. Okay. Ralph and, and John will be our budget committee then this year. Okay. And then the the dates are in front of you. Um it, that's our typical schedule. I don't think there's any, any particular <coughs> issue that we're going to have with that, unless anybody sees anything. You'll be back and healed by then. Yep. And we can have budget meetings in your hospital room. I hope I'm not in the hospital. <laughs> Actually, with a hip, you shouldn't be. That's right. That's right. That's right. We just, you know, we do them like that now. Well, with that, let's see. Do we need, do we need to do anything other than me appoint a committee? And set the date. And set the date. So we need that. Do that by motion. You can do the recommendation and just add the names of Ralph and John into the motion. Or okay. The recommendation of the item. Okay. I didn't. Set the date. It'll. <clears throat> yeah. Those two things. Set the date and then set the budget. Ready. Okay. Chair. Chair would entertain. That. So just move the recommendation. Yeah. I'm moving that. You're moving that. Anyone want to second that? I'll second that. <laughs> that has been seconded. <laughs> All righty. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion is approved. Thank you for that. <laughs> How do you spell that? <laughs> that was approved. Okay. All right. Folks, uh, item number 12 is an item to approve modifications to MPS organizational structure and job evaluation ratings. Bill this, or yeah. whoever. And uh, this item and the next item are, are joined, yes. you know, kind of move, they, they go together. Yep. Um, organizational structure changes happen from time to time. Uh, we've worked with IBEW because uh, some of those changes uh, deal with union employees. Uh, they're okay with, with the changes. Uh, Nancy and Chris Knudsen have spent quite a bit of time on this. Um, I'll let them give a brief overview and then we can answer questions um, as we as you would like and maybe just one more thing right below the background the first paragraph says you know and it's ref referencing the bylaws and the bylaws are of course your beyond the charter that's your your big policy document and uh, it says in there that the commission, upon my recommendation, shall approve the organizational structure and the number of personnel. The table that's attached is the, what we consider the organizational structure. We don't have a diagram that we're showing you. And then uh, the number of personnel is, the, you know, is just the final number at the bottom. And then we do have numbers on what all those are. So, so that's about as deep as the commission typically gets into you know, with with that, that's the you know the structure itself. So the titles, the numbers, and then the uh, the total number of personnel. 
and then you set compensation as well. But that's not we're not talking about that here. Okay. <coughs> Nancy Lund, admin and finance manager. So earlier this year, um, we had a resignation from the water construction and maintenance foreman, and each time we have an opening occur with an MPS, we take that as an opportunity to take a look at our processes, to take a look at our working groups, and see if we find a better you know, structure that will help us out. So that's what we did with the water distribution crew over the last several years. We've definitely had increased focus on, on our water main asset management plan. And so we've dedicated over a million dollars a year to that process. This gives us an opportunity to look at things a little differently and retool that department to not only to do water main replacement, but also to look at other other items within the water distribution, take a look at our valve programs, our hydrant programs, and things like that. So this will set us up better to, to accomplish that increased workload, we feel. And um, let's see, you know, just to also address the customer service perspective, so we've got some programs going on there that will be more customer friendly. And the addition of the water distribution supervisor should be an asset in running that division for us. So elimination of the foreman, uh, creation of a supervisor, and then it just a retooling of the existing employees within the group. We've also added in there um, an, one additional water, let's see, labor equipment operator. Uh, we're not definitely filling that at this time, but this would give us the authorization to take a look at that during the budget process and plan for that addition next year. Budget impact um, this year is actually a cost savings because we have had a vacancy for a period of time. Next year, the overall budget increase would be about 88,000 or the equivalent of a 1% rate increase, which we will work through during the budget process and find the funding for that position. Chris, anything from your point of view? Did your, your group? Over time, we, uh, over the past five years as part of our water main replacement program, <laughs> there's a lot of requirements in terms of notification of customers, um, traffic uh, implications, there to be press releases and things like that. Um, so a lot of that stuff I end up get, uh, ends up being a pretty big burden for the, for the whole period of the distribution. So we're going to take on a lot of those tasks in terms of uh, kind of multiple ways of touching base with our customers, let them know what we're doing and what the impacts are to the customer, and then just uh, helping on day-to-day -day just notifications, uh, working, working with uh, myself and city engineering. Right. So, uh, Chris, how many, how many years do we have left on the replacement? 12, somewhere around there? Uh, probably around 10, 12, yeah. yeah. And then part of, as, as Nancy alluded to, part of, um, Part of what we want to help accomplish is that, you know, as we really focus on water main replacement, we've taken a few years off from valve maintenance, higher maintenance. Those are things that uh, we need to find a kind of a little bit more balance in terms of getting after some of those main maintenance activities so that we can continue to provide a high level uh, of service with respect to those activities. Not falling behind any, though, on things uh, like not that. Not right now, but, you know, it's something we need to address in the very near near term and that's what does that mean very near uh, within the next year I would say okay let's make a note of that you know would hate to fall into a situation where suddenly we've got you know it's like the the mains going you know 20 at a time and yeah. Like so yeah bad year so. anything else more just an observation here for you on your um, path uh, the I guess the number of, of, of personnel you may just want to make sure you strike number four versus number five on labor equipment operator. It may be perceived as 45 versus five. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's true. It, it will be five. That's our understanding. Chris yeah. could, wouldn't know what to do with 45. Right. Find <laughs> oh, he could find <laughs> something to do with 45. <laughs> we'll be done with yeah. one main next year. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably got a line. I, I think it is struck. It's it just is. that it happens to line up at the bottom <laughs> of the it, it underlined it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, and we have two items that, that go well together here. So, you know, we're, we're comfortable, assured that, that we have an agreement with, with IBEW and, you know, 
solid there. So, yep. Yep. so I know we'll get to that, but might as well bring it up now. Okay. Okay. Any yet further questions? Two separate motions, Bill, or you could do them together. Or I do mean, them together. Unless, yeah. Shall we move into the next one and just you know, yep. run through the item number thirteen? Then is uh, is to approve mem memorandum of agreement with IBEW in relation to the previous item. Yeah, I mean, Nancy, go ahead. Bill. Go ahead, Nancy. Chris and I have met with IBW representative a couple different times and yeah. explained the org structure changes. <clears throat> talked about all the changes that would occur in the wage schedule. We are in agreement on those, and we have worked out a new wage rate for the lead heavy equipment operators, so they are on board with that wage, and they have reviewed um, the agreement, so they've even reviewed that, have, have agreed to everything in there, so it's just a matter of signatures at this point, and um, both parties at IBW are on board with this. Okay. We're good with that. <clears throat> okay. No further questions. I would entertain a motion for items number 12 and 13. I move approval of items 12 and 13. Got a motion. May I have a second? Second. Got a second. Last chance. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion is approved. Thank you very much. All right. Now I'm scripted. I have to read this correctly so we do this right. All righty. First. First. Yes. Is your item Okay. Go ahead. Are we good? Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Just making sure I do this right, folks. Uh, th this meeting will now be closed for executive session as authorized by Minnesota Statute Section 13D.05, Subdivision 3B, and permitted by the attorney-client privilege to discuss possible litigation related to aquifer protection issues. Um, and as authorized by Minnesota Statute Section 13D.05, Subdivision 3C, to discuss agreements between MPS and the City of Moorhead concerning real property interests with respect to land near Moorhead Public Services Opportunity Substation, the Elm Street Power Plant site, and the City of Moorhead's 20th 21st Street grade separation project. And as authorized by Minnesota Statute Section 13D.05, Subdivision 3A, to evaluate the performance of the general manager. Um, do we expect to take action on any of the, these items above? We may take action on, on one of them. Oh, okay. Okay. So if we do, then action is expected to be taken upon conclusion of the executive session. So. Um, I think it would be more active to take action, maybe. Maybe. maybe okay. Take. Maybe taken. Okay. Uh, which means who needs to hang out? Okay. All right. Who else? Uh, I don't. Well, I think what would would do if we take action is yeah is open and then close again. Yeah. For the right. general manager's right. review. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. We could do. That. Why don't we do that? Yeah. So so we'll close. You know, the first take care two. of business if we need to, and then and then we can yep. get settle up. Okay. Um, I guess with that, we'll close the meeting. Yep. And we'll have I need to a motion to do that? Yes. Yep. I move for closing meeting. Need a motion. Second? Second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. We are, uh, motion is approved. We are in closed session. And then adjourn. And then adjourn after that. Adjourn upon conclusion. Well, the closing John. Walls. Yep. Um, just the, uh, during the discussion, it reminded me of something. I think uh, Cheryl and I had asked uh, last meeting about being a HR committee for training. Purposes. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, I did not get any update as far as how that's going to be preceded because I think Bill said you were going to look at probably maybe implementing training and then if it was needed for us to have a committee, we could then discuss it. But maybe on the next meeting you could give an update as far as how that's going to be addressed. Yeah, I mean, what I was thinking would happen is you can have a committee of the general manager where you're advising me, but I'm doing, you know, whatever. You're, you're kind of coming alongside the administrator. Um, if you have a committee of the commission, and maybe this is just nuance, you know, then they're reporting to the commission, you know, investigating, doing whatever, kind of like the budget committee. So I was thinking more of a advisory committee, just you, you know, you two with me, and uh, you know, we can kind of go over things. I don't know if those dynamics were specific.
decided upon. I was just saying that you were going to report back to us as far as how that was going to be. Yep. Yep. Can we do that in the first meeting in September? You will not be around August 21st, so. Right. Yeah. So can we get back to that early in September then? Yeah. Since you're going to be. be or can you can do something in between while he's. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Available. Are you available next week? Yeah. Because I think Sean and I were going to meet anyway, so we three could meet. Okay. And Nancy might join us and we can just talk about some of those things. Yeah. You and I have talked, and Nancy and I have talked, Cheryl and I haven't talked about some of those ideas, yeah. and I think that would be very helpful. Yeah. We're out of the so loop. we'll just try and do something next week. We don't care. Thank We're you. just feeling left out. Yeah. So. Thank you. So, <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Okay. Well, do we have any other old business to attend to? I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I wasn't pointing at him, was I? No. Okay. okay. Just your pen. I just got a pen. Just, just my pen was. I just got a pen. And it's magnetic. It just keeps pointing back at it. Okay. All righty. Well, then, uh, with that, I would entertain a motion to go back into closed session for the uh, state of purpose as previously read, uh, and then to adjourn uh, from there. I move we go to closed session for the purpose of the performance of the jail manager. Do I have a second? All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, same sign. Thank you very much. Motion is approved. We are in, we are. Yeah, sure. Okay.